Hi, so guess where this is? If you said a library, you'd be 100% correct. And this isn't some like stock photo library. This is a picture I actually took at the Cleveland Public Library. And this happened to be the special collections room. If you ever get a chance to go to special collections in a library, it's super, super cool. Um, there's a whole thing about chess here because like the world champion chess players chess set is here. I'm not sure what the connection is to the library, but there's some connection. And there's these really old books and it's really interesting. But why would I take you to a library for a video? Well, typically when you think about libraries, you think about librarians and lots of books and periodicals and finding information. This is where you go to find things. Now, a lot of times people just go digitally to the library, which I will tell you is super cool. The ability to just like digitally log into the library and find what you need. Keep in mind though, that most libraries have a connection to an actual librarian, which is useful. Like our library at the college does, you can go to the library website and you can actually chat with a librarian if it's during normal hours. And if it's not, then you just send them a message and they love to answer questions. But in general, you probably think of a library as, place, as a place where you would find reliable sources. You know, the librarians are trained in library science, like how to search for things, how to find out reliable information. And that's a perfect place to launch this project. So our Reliable Sources project starts this week. And it's actually the combination of several different projects that I've done over the years. But I've kind of rolled it all into one because it streamlines the process. And we did this last semester and it worked out pretty well. So let me take you over to Moodle. Well, actually, first, let me tell you why we're doing this. This is a computer class. Why do we care about reliable information? You know why? Because where do most people find their information these days? Like when was the last time you walked into the library or read a newspaper or a magazine, like a paper one? Most people log on, they Google something, they find the information they think they need and away they go. But they never ask themselves, like, is this a reliable source? Where did the information come from? How do I find out if it's true and valid and useful? What do I do with it all? How do I curate all the stuff I get? So this project is a perfect use of information technology because we're gonna answer those questions over the next several weeks. And so this is a project that has many steps. It's broken into five parts and each piece builds on the next piece. So it's not like you can skip number two and then just go do number three. Okay, you really got to do them in order. So if you get a little bit behind, you should contact me because we want to keep you on track. But let me show you what we're working with or what we'll be doing. So when you log into Moodle, you're going to see a new block open. And I put it right here in the beginning because it's going to be, we're going to be using this block for a long time. Now, this is the overview video of the whole project. And so um, if you read through this, it tells you what the task is. You're going to go through the process of learning to find, evaluate, and summarize your information that you find through online resources and how to use common collaboration software to create documents that demonstrate all of this stuff. And the process is where, you know, each piece is going to have its own set of instructions. And I would really print those off. Like I know it's all online, but if you have access to a printer when I was an online student, which I was for a long time, um, I would print off the important stuff because it was easier for me to keep track. Uh, but you're welcome to copy stuff into Google Drive and keep track that way, whatever works for you, but follow the instructions. And the timeline is, is this going to take part over, I want to say like eight weeks. It's about a half semester project. So there is some flexibility in here. Now, you're not going to see all of these blocks open right away because I'm going to only talk about part one today because each of these parts will have their own video. But in a nutshell, you're going to select a topic. You're going to find a couple of reliable articles about them. You're going to dig in a little bit deeper into those sources and evaluate them, set up evaluation criteria. You're going to submit one of them for uh, my review. And then at the end, you're gonna create an annotated bibliography where you submit five different sources, um, but we'll be building on this as we go. So let's jump into these first two blocks. Like I said, each of these other parts will have their own video. 
So um, the parts, like I just said, topic selection, create evaluation criteria, resource selection, submit one, and create an annotated bibliography. And as you can see, each part builds on the next part. But let's look at this very first part, topic selection, because you have to know what you're going to look at. And I'm not going to give you a topic. I want you to pick a topic that has to do with technology. Now, on all of these, when you click into it, you're going to get something that says assignment details, because I've created a Google Doc. So when you click that, it'll bring you to a page, to this page, actually. And you'll see a jump menu, but these sources, these links won't go anywhere for you. Not quite yet. As we build out each one, instead of deleting them all, I'm just leaving them live. But when you go to it, it'll probably say you don't have permission to look at it until it's time to open that part of the assignment. I do that on purpose because if you run ahead, you really need context for how each piece fits into the next piece. So we'll launch those over the subsequent weeks. Anyhow, just know that there's a jump menu there. So what you're going to do in this very first part is pick a topic, but I'm going to ask you to pick three topics. Now, you might be saying like, I have no idea what technology topics I want to look at. Lucky for you, let's go back to here. Um, you've got a resource to help you search. This technology news blog has all kinds of different um, resources that are pretty reliable. Now, Google Tech News and Twitter, anybody can post to that. So I'm not validating the reliability of those sources. There's some good ones and there's some questionable ones. But MIT Tech Review and CNET, all these other ones are pretty reliable sources. So maybe your first step is to take a few minutes and just read through and say, huh, well, that looks interesting. And hmm, this one seems kind of cool. And hmm, I wonder about that. And make a list of topics. So what you'll do for this very first section is you're going to create a mic or you're going to create a Google Doc that lists your three topics. And I give you an example of how to do it down here. You know, here's some good topics, here's some bad topics. And basically, you're going to give me your topic and one article that discusses the topic and why you find it interesting. So those three things, the topic an article that discusses the topic and why you find it interesting enough um, to use for this project, okay? Because in the end, you're going to have to find five different articles about the topic. So you're going to make a proposal to me, okay? And your proposal is going to have those things. Now, you're going to create a document and down here, I'll jump back to the proposal in a minute, what I'm going to do with that. Down here, Here's how to get started with the document. A lot of you have used Google Docs, but if you haven't, or if you'd like to brush up, there is Google Drive and Docs from GCF Learn. There's Google Docs help files. Um, the beginner's guide from Dotto Tech's a couple of years old, but I like how he does his videos. I always play my videos on like 1.5 speed, so they go a little faster, I can get through them. Uh, anyhow, there's some resources there for how to get started with Google Docs. But if you've used any kind of word processor before, you'll find it pretty intuitive to use Google Doc. Anyhow, there's a skill list. So this is kind of the check off, can I do this in a document sort of thing. So the word processing skill list. So your document has to include the different things on this list. They're pretty straightforward, but if you end up with any questions, you just let me know. Your submission process is you're gonna download the file as a PDF file. And so in a doc, I'm in a doc right now, you go to file, download, PDF, boom, you've got it. Okay, always check it, always open the PDF to make sure it looks like you think it should look. Um, but in general, that turns out pretty well. Oops. So make sure you have the correct file name, which is mentioned up above in the checklist. Um, you're going to download it as a file type, and then you'll come back. Let's go back to that reliable sources, and you'll see this in week four. But if you lose track of where things are, you can always just come back here. You'll see this here. And what you're going to do for me is, well, I have view all submissions. You'll have an upload file. OK, so you're going to upload that PDF. And here's how you're going to be evaluated on it. So always look at the rubric, all right? The thing that has the most points is where you should put the most work. So you're going to give me three ideas. You're going to summarize the idea. You're going to tell me what it is, why you want to use it. 
or why you think it would be interesting. And then you're gonna give me an article and a citation that goes with it. And then this is just that checklist of skills down here. So this is a 30 point assignment. So let's go back up. Going up, going up, going up. Once you give me this list, you're gonna select your three ideas that you think would be interesting. You're gonna submit that document to me. And then I'm gonna send back to you during the week, I'm gonna send back to you the topic I would like you to use. Okay, and sometimes I might give you actually like some suggestions, um, like maybe broaden it out a little bit or narrow it down a little bit. It just depends. Um, but definitely look for that. And that'll be on your Discord notes channel that I'll send back the one I'd like you to work on. So let's talk about topic ideas and then I'll wrap this video up. Um, I give a couple of examples here. So we want topics that are broad enough and interesting enough that they can't just be answered with a yes or no. Should everyone have a smartphone? No. Yes. I mean, you can make a case for either one, right? Or that you could just look up on Wikipedia, the history of the iPhone. Let's just go to the Wikipedia page for iPhones and read the history. That's kind of boring. What would make a better topic is how have smartphones changed how people interact with each other and the world around them? Another example, so a bad idea would be, what kind of servers does Facebook use to manage its user base? Well, that's just a tech question, right? You could probably look that up. How about, should the algorithm social media uses to show you the ads you are interested in be the same one it uses to show you the ideas you should be thinking about? Now, that's an interesting topic. So your task, let me uh, stop sharing. So your task this week, read through this reliable source part one document closely. Okay, you're going to want to read it closely so that you understand all the parts. But then don't get too hung up on it. Do start doing a search, start reading some articles, look through your Twitter feed now that you're following 50, hopefully. Um, see what kind of things they're posting. Find, find some things that catch your attention. Okay. And then you're going to take three of those, three different things, make me a proposal. Say, I'd like to look at this one. I think this one would be interesting because, you know, blah, 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 whatever you think it would be interesting. And here's an article that talks about it. I think this one would be interesting, blah, 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 blah. And here's another article that talks about this other thing. And then do the same thing for a third one. Make sure you hit all the items on that checklist. You know, and it's mostly things like, can you have a heading? Can you make something bold? You know, change the font. It's some basic word processing hoops. Take advantage of the resources for how to do it if you need to. Use the help desk to ask questions if you need to, okay? And, um, and just write it down. This is, this is not more than a page because you're really just writing like a paragraph for each one, for each of your three things. So it should be pretty straightforward, but get this to me one, get this one to me on the deadline because I need a few days to kind of look it over and then give you back your topic. So this is a fun project. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but we'll hit it piece by piece by piece. And at the end of it, you're gonna have a really good skill set for how to find, how to filter, how to evaluate, um, and how to, how to use information that you find on the internet.